konnichiwa and welcome everybody back to Chrono Reviews. It's time for another Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom toy review from Mattel. And it's time for another Roar of War. And this time it's nothing less than the Identity Crisis Ceratops. <clears throat> I mean, Sinoceratops. No, wait, it's a Pachyrhinosaurus. Uh, wait a minute. Well, to put this short, when Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom was in production, Mattel got informed that they will have a Pachyrhinosaurus and they created a Pachyrhinosaurus. But during production they changed it to Sinoceratops and Mattel was not like updated on it as far as I know. It, it might be correct or give or take what I'm saying. But in the long run, they was forced to rename what they already had, which was a Pachyrhinosaurus. So this one is not a Sinoceratops. It is actually a Pachyrhinosaurus. The mini-action dino version actually still says Pachyrhinosaurus. And I do hope, just like a lot of fans out there, that they will do a correct Sinoceratops. I don't care if it have the same color, because this is the movie color. But a correct Sinoceratops and once and for all confirm this to be simply a Pachyrhinosaurus. So that's what I'm going to refer it as from now on. So I will not be able to make any movie accuracy comparisons because it's not a Sinoceratops. It's very close though with the body and the color and the basic shape of the head. I give it that but it's still a Pachyrhinosaurus. So let's get right into it and check the box. It actually have the same color on this picture because it was really different colored on the preview images. I sort of wish they kept that color to keep it more as a Pachyrhinosaurus, but never mind. You can see the action feature here. It says Sinoceratops, but I'm not going into it again. You know what I mean. The um, there's a picture of Blue and Owen. It says try here for the sound and it shows that it have sound. There's the logo there, a cage design, the lava, logo on the sides, information stuff on the bottom. And on the back there is also Roar of War feature and shows what it can do. You can scan it for the Jurassic Facts app. And there is also pictures of other Roar of Wars. So there is the Mechacanthosaurus, Triceratops, and Tyrannodon. Alright, here it is, the Pachyrhinosaurus opened up. And I must say, it, it does really look good. It doesn't matter what it's named, but it does look good. I must say that the color is really striking. It looks sort of tribal, and I love it. It's a lot different than the other ones we got, so each dinosaur have its own trademark color which makes it stand out and I like that. And as for the movie canon ones, they are usually at least close to the movie color and while this is not a Sinoceratops 200%, the color is very close to the Sinoceratops we see in the movie. So yep, if Mattel does a Sinoceratops with this color a correct one with a horn. It would be awesome. And let's just get straight into the details and check it out. So first off, here's the Jurassic Facts app. And it also have the trademark Jurassic logo here. And just like the Roar of War, other Roar of Wars, you have the uh, springs for the sound here. So when it stands like this, you will not get bothered by it. So first off, the underbelly is painted. It's not that usual to see on Roar of Wars, but here it is painted on the underside and that's really nice. The sculpture, it's really good. I keep, com I said I would not make movie comparisons, but the body is really looking like the Sinoceratops because it have those folds and it looks a bit chubby like it should. And the frill is sculpted pretty much, it, it looks quite similar, but this is where the Pachyrhinosaurus stuff comes in. Those horns 
are bent to the side that Pachyrhinosaurus have. But Cynoceratops had them pointing forwards and those were a little bit longer. But otherwise it's very similar. The beak is very similar and those um, horns or spikes here at the sides. The paint job is very close to the Cynoceratops with the white here, white around the eye and a bit of orange here and stripes here. The button is actually slightly different tone of green. So I can see that it's made from white or beige plastic with green painted on, while here it's green plastic and the white painted on. I think it would be better if it was the same plastic as here with the white painting painted on in order to match the rest. No big deal, but just a little pointer there. And this one actually have color all the way out the tail, which is an improvement. Just like the others, no painted toenails, but it's fine on herbivores, I guess. And there's some paint here. I'm not sure exactly, probably should have it like that. But it's a little bit weird that they did not do it on the back leg. But it does not look bad. And my biggest gripe with the paint job though, is that the hump here should be painted, I think. Either the same color as the beak, or the same color... Yeah, probably the same color as the beak and the horns. The horns are a bit darker than the beak, so maybe the same color as the horns here would make most sense to have on the nose hump. But it looks, still looks good. I just wish they painted it because since it's solid, it should not be the same color as the skin. Just my little input there. And what can, could we do to make this a Cynoceratops? Well, first off, it should have a quite thick horn at the nose instead. Otherwise, the skull looks quite similar. Maybe the frill should look a little bit bigger because the head looks sort of small. Not that it bothers me, but sort of. But I think Pachyrhinosaurus have smaller crest than Cynoceratops. And there should be holes here. So add two holes that go straight through. And point those forward and give it a thick horn. Then you have a Cynoceratops. But for a Pachyrhinosaurus, this is a really great sculpture. And as far as articulation goes, the tail, you clicked on the tail, but you cannot... Alright. Sound preview. There, but you can't swivel it. And the legs have articulation. Like this, so it goes outward. So if you take it outward, it can go further up. Otherwise it's a little bit limited. Okay, the front legs, and it can go out sort a little bit. Quite limited, but they go out and they can move. You get what you need from the herbivore, and it's a lot more articulation than herbivores ever had back in the Kenner days. And the head is a little bit wobbly. Right, it triggered the sound again. Um, the head can wobble a little bit. It's sort of, I think it's for when kids play and impact, it will turn, instead of break, risk breaking, it will turn and twist to match the impact. I think that's a good thing when it comes to sturdiness unless it's fragile, I'm not sure, but I hope not. So now, let's get into the sounds for real. That was very much like the trike, sort of reminded me of a T-Rex growl, but it's very hard to tell. Yeah, very similar to the trike too. That's pretty much a triceratops or a ceratops in, in general. That one sounded sort of like a Indoraptor or Indominus Rex growl mixed into some more herbivoric sounds. Yep, I think it's a bit about three or four different sounds, and while most of them are quite nice, 
I'm now not, not that much of a fan of mixing in carnivore sounds into the herbivore sounds. They overuse the T-Rexes a lot. It's fine on the carnivores because they're more related, but in general, the Pteranodon, the Pteranodon actually are what had the best sounds because simply it, it totally had its own thing. It was not a lot of mixed in T Rex sounds. The, the Pteranodon had pure own original sounds. Well, I'm not counting the T Rex because the T Rex is the T Rex, so the T Rex should have T Rex sounds, of course. And the Indraptor, the Grab and Girl Indraptor had Indraptor sounds. I give it that. But out of the Roar of Wars, the best one when it comes to the sounds are the Pteranodon. So let's start comparing this beauty to some other toys. Let's start off with the humans. So here's Owen Grady and here is Alan Grant. And I think Owen Grady is pretty much what you expect in size from a Cynoceratops. So let's put Grant aside immediately. And so if you go through the movie, it's pretty much about right when it licks him in the face, which is, as far as I know, actually a scene they adapted from the novels where Stegosaurus did that to Alan Grant. Or was it Malcolm in The Lost World? I think it was to Alan Grant in Jurassic Park, but it could have been The Lost World. I just think that it was used in the novel somewhere. I have just read a bit of Jurassic Park. I have not finished the novels yet, so I, c I can't 100% say, but I've just heard it because a YouTuber talked about it when they went into what scenes was used from the novels and not in Fallen Kingdom. But in general, this one is the size of the Cynoceratops in the movie. But again, I keep saying Cynoceratops, but Pachyron sources and Cynoceratopses are basically very similar in size. So, to humans, it looks good. And that makes it automatically quite good compared to blue, of course. And then we have... Yep, let's get into this as first. Again, another movie comparison. While it's still not a Cynoceratops, it still sizes well with the Carnotaurus. So, they can fight and you can reenact the movie and then it goes like that and then it runs away but you can reenact the movie and they, they really look good together another shame while it's not a real Cynoceratops they re really look good together so I really like that Th these two looks really good together just like in the movie and I really like that. Now, let's get into the family. So here we have the Triceratops. Now we are getting to the real interesting part. The Pachyrhinosaurus are actually bigger. The back is taller. It have more bulk. So it's really sad that they did not do the Triceratops in the same size or bigger, even if it's a Rorvor, they should not restrict themselves to smaller size. So again, I wish they make a t action attack Triceratops that's slightly bigger than this one, because Triceratops are supposed to be bigger than the Pachyrhino and Cynoceratopses, not the other way around. So a bigger trike is so much to be desired, but because this one is really good size together with Owen. So of course a bigger Triceratops is desired really really badly. And the smallest one in the family is here. So there we have it, a Protoceratops as well. So together they are the Ceratops since we currently have except for, yeah, there are a few Microceratus with the Destructosaurus sets and I really want those too but we'll see when that happens. There's also a battle damage, smaller Triceratops, sadly, a smaller Triceratops, but I could see that as a juvenile. I want it, but I still so much desire a bigger trike. We need a bigger Triceratops, and we need 
a real Sinoceratops to go together with this Pachyrhinosaurus. So as a representation of Sinoceratops, this one got zero points. However, as a Pachyrhinosaurus and as far as painting goes together, compared with the Sinoceratops in the movie, it gets a lot better score. Maybe 7 out of 10 or something. But I don't usually do scores, but <laughs> I just want to point out that it's a really good toy. Despite being named the wrong, it's, it's put under the wrong name, but it's a good toy. And while I do hope that they that they uh, do a, a correct Sinoceratops as well in future releases, I'm still happy that this toy looks so good as it does, and it looks really great with the contours, it's greatly scaled with the humans. It's one of my favorite Roarvors because of those good points. So, it's not a bad toy, it just had a little bit of a bad streak when it comes to the name. So I hope you enjoyed this review, and until next time, take care and sayonara!